What's up everybody, my name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to be talking to you about a topic that not a ton of people talk about much, but I think it's very important and it is drum layering. Now I have done a video before, maybe multiple videos about layering percussions with drums and you know that's very important, it goes very well, but not just as extra percussions to go in between the empty spaces where the main drums hit. I'm talking about actually stacking drums together and layering them together. And not just drums either, we're talking about literally any sound that you want to snack, stack on top of your drum. Now, obviously, there are a lot of genres in EDM that are very kind of, you know, conservative with their drums. It's pretty straightforward what kind of drums you want when you're making them. But especially if you're doing something experimental, drum layering can be a big difference in making your track sound professional. Like if you just have a normal drum loop like this, Now that beat is pretty straightforward and it's not even that bad. The drum samples used are pretty good and it's playing a nice rhythm, but they don't stand out. There's nothing about those drums that is particularly fascinating. They're really just normal drums that could go in any normal track. And I don't think most people want to have just a normal track on their platform. They want to have, you know, an exceptional track, something that you can actually remember. And, and like I said before, you don't necessarily have to just put things, percussions, cymbals, and stuff in between those hits in order to make it sound professional and big and loud. Like you can just layer things on top of the hits you already have, and it will already sound infinitely better. Here's an example of this. Now, of course, I am going to be putting things in between as well, but you can already hear just from those two examples that the second one is far more interesting. It has more interesting layers, and I'm gonna show you the best way to go about kind of adding layers on top of the drum sounds you already have. <laughs> So here we are in this track, and this track is actually something that I made on a Ghost Hack live stream where I was creating a demo track to go behind some vocals from uh, Ghost Hack's Ultimate Vocal Library Volume 3. But uh, listening back, I really did enjoy how the drums came out, and I think it would be really beneficial for me to go over them. That's kind of why I'm making this video. So I guess I'll just start with this. This is the original kick I started with, just the first one. And it's a nice, deep, thumpy kick, you know what I'm saying? It's got some harmonics, it's got a good thud in the low end. And what I layered it with was this something that has pretty much no low end. You know, it's kind of wide, it's, it's very mid heavy. And you can see this is just a kick that I took out uh, the low end to. And then I added some distortion right there, crushing it up. I compressed it. So it has this really crunchy tail. Added a slight bit of room reverb, very low decay. So it's just a super tight decay to that. And then I finally EQ'd out the high end and the rest of the low end just to control it, because all this is is kind of an ambient layer. This is almost like a, a Foley textural layer. When you're layering your kicks, you have to be careful not to layer too much low end on top of each other. I didn't want this layer to have low end. The low end of this kick already sounded great. I want to just keep that low end and keep that punch, that cleanness, while layering it with something textural on top. And the beauty of doing these layers separately instead of just grabbing a kick that sounds like it has layers on top is you can remove the layers and replace them and place them just wherever you want. Like there are some kind of ghost kicks in here that I didn't really want the layer to hit on. And it can make those ghost kicks sound a little less strong without actually turning down the volume of the kick, you know what I'm saying? That's not always an easy way to do things. So just layering them where you want it to be nice and strong and heavy. That's how I kind of layer things on top of my kicks. And you can layer pretty much anything on top of your kicks if it sounds good, as long as you make sure that it's not interfering with the low end of the kick that is already there. I suggest having just one kick and saying this, this one kick is solely going to be dedicated to low end punch. And then the rest of the layers that you might add to it, whether it be one or whether it be a few, should just, uh, you should roll off the low end and just use the mid or high frequencies as the layer. Next up would be layering the snare. Now this snare right here is a Ghost Hack Future Bass snare. 
which I kind of like the snare already. I think it's a pretty nice snare. It has a nice sort of uh, clappy impact. It has a cool tail. There's some reverb to it. There's tonality. And what I do when I'm layering my snares is I pretty much think about the layers that I want and I decide, do I want this layer to add more impact, more punch to the snare? Or do I want this layer to add more texture and harmonics to kind of the mid region and the tail of the snare? What do, what do I want from this? So if I want extra punch for something, I usually pick a snare that has just a nice punch and I don't really listen to the end. Now I have this snare here, which has a bit of a tail, which the tail that it's adding right now, it does add some, add some extra room to the end, but it also has some uh, sort of almost organic sounding punch to it. Like that's the kind of impact that you might get if you were actually hitting a real snare drum. Now, obviously this isn't a real snare drum, this is a synth snare, but it sounds, the impact sounds more like a real snare drum instead of a, instead of a mix of some clappy synthetic stuff. So I wanted to layer that together. And that adds a more natural uh, impact to the snare and it also adds a more natural tail on top of the less natural tail of this one. So that was kind of the usage I did for that snare. But another thing I add to my snares a lot is I add claps. For example, here's a ghost hat clap. And you can hear this clap does not have much impact. There isn't really a tight transient to it. It's really just kind of a loose group clap where it all just kind of blah, just flows out. It's kind of splayed out. And I don't want this for impact at all. I want all these little individual claps, this big messy just group clap together to layer as sort of the meat of the snare and to add more tail and texture. So without it, you have this. And then with it, you have this. Now the snare has a lot more space. It has a lot more meat in the middle. You can hear some texture to the snare other than just a single hit. It actually sounds like there's things happening at once and it makes it a lot more interesting. And already we have much more interesting drums. And another trick you can do, this is another good thing about having the layers, instead of just picking one big snare sample that has all of this shoved into one, is you can do things like this, like delaying them. For example, I delayed this clap here. So we, we have like a pre-snare where there's a little bit of the clap playing right at this moment, just before the snare hits. And it makes it sound like everything is just like slightly off time, like there's just a little bit of uh, attack to the clap. And this is done a lot, especially when mixing claps with snares. This is a very, very handy trick to do when you're mixing that because it's done all the time. It adds a lot of, uh, not quite intensity to your snares, but just a lot of texture, a lot of uniqueness to the snare. And especially when you don't do it in this one, then you do it in this one, then you don't do it in this one, you do it at this one. It kind of, it keeps the drums interesting is what I'm trying to say. That's a much more interesting drum hit than just this. And then I also have this sound right here, which is another one that I just have coming in in certain spots. And you can hear this is just a really trashy kind of distorted snare. It's, it's mainly focusing on the tail, right? There is no real transient to the snare. You're not getting a punch with the snare, so it's not adding anything to the transient. I didn't really want to add anything to the transient. I just wanted something to be there to make the snare more beefy in these scenarios. It sounds very synthetic. It sounds very uh, experimental. I really like it. And it basically came from taking, taking a normal snare. This is actually kind of a snare clap that I took. And then what I did to affect it is I have an EQ to just take out low end. I have a Maximus to do some hard compression on the mids and highs. So we can really get that tail out there. And then I just said, okay, I'm gonna trim the sample up to exactly this spot. Like if I were to hold it out, then that tail would last a lot longer. But I said, okay, I want the snare to shut up right here. So we can cut it off right there. Then after that, I added some distortion. So now it's much messier, right? It is a lot thicker, but it is much messier. So we have to add an EQ. And then I took out the high end, took out the low end, and I just cut down this frequency. So it almost sounds like a big snare coming through like a broken radio that's all staticky. It's really interesting. And I like adding these sounds to snares as layers because a lot of snares have like an impact, just a psh, 
and then they kind of fade out. They have a nice tail. Whereas this snare doesn't fade out immediately. It's like a psh, and it kind of holds there for a second at maximum volume. And that adds a lot of interesting elements to the snare as well. Like you can hear them together. And just as one last short journey back through time, this is what we originally started with. And you can tell that is a lot more boring than the sounds that we have right now. As a matter of fact, let me play a little bit of this track with the original drums that I just started with. And now we can pretend that that snare was loud enough to really fit in the mix. I had to turn it down because of all the layers, but now I can play what it is with the drum layers. To take something relatively simple like this drum pattern and to kind of take it to the next level, go somewhere that not every other producer would go, is what adds that unique quality to a track and that's what makes it memorable in people's brains. So just going above and beyond with little details like that in my opinion, is extremely important to making music that is good, that is unique, and can kind of stand out from the rest of all the millions of tracks out there. And of course, I did layer these sounds in between. I believe originally I just had this, which is just kind of a hat percussion loop, which is kind of cool. It's kind of uh, phasing around, panning around and it adds a lot to it, but I think I took exactly the same loop and I slowed it down by a lot. So now we have these little percussion sounding hi-hats, cymbals, very, very processed sounds hitting in between, and that adds a lot of rhythm and texture as well. And another example of doing this layering can be found in the intro where I had some intro drums hitting. Now you can tell that that drum pattern is very similar to the drum pattern that I used in the chorus and that's because there are a lot of the same elements that I used here. I used similar patterns and I even took that drum loop and exported it out and added some effects to layer it on top of the other drums here. Like here I can show you what I started with. I started with this drum, this kick, which has, which is kind of a cool acoustic kick. It's still deep, but it has like a kind of a ringing tail to it. It's kind of nice. And then I had this clap. which is of course the clap that I used to layer with the snare in the chorus. But I added some other things on top of it. On top of that kick, I added this, which you may recognize that that was exactly the layer that I used when I was making the kick in the chorus. So same layer in the chorus, same layer in the intro. It kind of ties all together, even though it's on top of a different kick. And you can see it's not layering on every beat either, just like it did in the course. You know, you can kind of tie them together this way. And then we have the clap, of course, pretty simple. And then I also layered it with this. This is a different clap. And this clap layer is actually a clap layer that's not being used as a tail at all. This is a very tight clap, it's a very short clap. I wanted to use this for impact. I wanted there to be more clappy impact because like we talked about, this clap right here has very little impact. It's really just a nice meaty clap to layer on top of other things. So I used this. Now there's a little more impact to it. But like I said a second ago, I also took the main drums that were in the chorus and I kind of rendered them out and added some effects to them here. And I used them as a layer. What I did was I started by adding some bit crushing. So it's a little more digital. And then I added a vocodex to kind of make it sound strange. You can see this kind of tightened everything up. It took away a lot of the background ambience and almost gives it like a plastic quality. I like it. And then I went into an EQ. I controlled the low end, boosted a little bit of mids, and I added a tad bit of reverb just to give it some space. And then I distorted it here with the wave shaper give it a little more saturation, a little more power. 
but this loop layers together beautifully with the other drums I have. And is infinitely more interesting than this. And you can hear how it sounds in context. So that concludes my little lesson on drums and drum layering. I hope you found this at least a little bit helpful and you can kind of work to incorporate these kind of techniques in your songs and your tracks as well. I think the beauty in the art of producing tracks like this and of this style and other similar styles is to kind of see beyond the obvious and do things that, you know, might not be conventional to do. Maybe you don't want to add a on top of every snare, but there's plenty of situations in which adding a will get other people going, oh, okay, that's actually pretty cool. That's something unique that will stand out in their minds as something different that separates your track from just all the other generic tracks out there. And I know I say this all the time, but get creative with this. You wanna layer a vocal with your snare? Awesome, there's plenty of times when that sounds great. You wanna layer just some weird uh, thing that you recorded around your house just tapping on something? That's awesome as well. Layer it with rain, layer it with anything you want. There are endless possibilities to to be unlocked here and there are endless awesome tracks to create so on that note thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video happy producing